welcome to another episode of SEOs Getting Coffee. Today, I will be kind of jumping into this host role. Hopefully, I don't uh, make any mistakes or anything, but it's a really, really, really exciting one today. We're going to be talking about a topic that's close to all of our hearts uh, that are working in SEO, which is about scaling SEO. And we have a very special guest, uh, Tori Gray from Company. And I will let her introduce herself. So big welcome to Tori. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, You're going to do wonderful. Don't worry. I'll take it easy on you. (laughs) Um, I'm founder and CEO of Gray Doc Company. Um, We specialize in technical SEO, strategic SEO. We also do a lot of work with data and DMI, like using search and social data for market intelligence. Uh, And fair warning, if you see me wipe my eyes, I have seasonal allergies and I promise this team did not make me cry. (laughs) Oh, good. Good. Excellent. Well, hopefully we won't make you cry. (laughs) You never know. I mean, maybe we all maybe we'll, yes. maybe we'll go for the really controversial kind oh, of. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> no, don't worry. It's all, it's all downhill from here, y'all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you have a cup, cuppa? I mean, we are here for a coffee. Sean always comes with that. Yep. There you go. No, there you I'm, go. I'm, prepared. All... I'm prepared this time. I have this got a cup time. of tea, though, okay, so it's not, it isn't coffee. Um, Same, yeah. actually. Yeah. I'm being very, very British, and I have my, my oat milk in my tea. Oh, right nice. You'll fit right in for Brighton SEO. You know, <laughs> everybody has oat milk. Um, yeah. All right, but from oat milk to a topic that we're here for, which is scaling SEO. So let's start with kind of the basics. Uh-huh. What do we mean? We always talk about uh, scaling SEO in, in our industry, but what do we actually mean by that? Yeah. I mean, it's it's as simple as growing traffic and figuring out how to do that, right? Um, and I think that that can look different for different people, depending on what kind of site that they're um, hired into or working on. So whether you're agency side and you're working on clients of different sizes, or you're in-house and you're, you're working for your company and it's your job to figure out how to grow, 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 right? Um, I think it's a hot topic always, but also especially lately because of AI. So we can dig into that and the challenges mm-hmm. there. Um, and I would also say like sometimes a, a, an unappreciated or uh, an angle that we don't talk about often enough, like we talk about how to scale content. We often don't necessarily talk about like you walk in at a company and there already is scale, right? You you join, if you join the Best Buy SEO team, yeah, you already have scale. You just have to learn how to deal with it appropriately. Right. And yeah. so there can be different um, tactics and, and things you have to to learn to. Um, it just changes the game a little bit and what you want to focus on. And um, so we can we can speak a little bit to both sides of this coin. Yeah. Like maintaining scale, isn't it? Because, yes. you know, after a while, there's this plateau that, that you, you do. I mean, a market mm-hmm. is only so big. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's an interesting kind of game. It is. And when when you do have scale, right, like it's not just about maintaining it, though that is a critical and again, underappreciated part because it is work to maintain. It's not just work to to grow. It's not always up and to the right. Sometimes it's, there's maintenance work, right? Um, But I think we... We also need to work, like we have to work with our QA processes to make sure it stays. Um, And there's just, I don't know, there's so much we're going to get into today. So it's going to be great. Excellent. And I mean, when we're talking about scales, there's loads of ways that companies can mm-hmm. scale. Some, What are some of the ones that you've been doing with your clients? You know, what are some of the kind of the opportunities and strategies that you've been using? So, I mean, the obvious first one is what I just mentioned. You come in and there's already a bunch of pages. So we're talking like um, either enterprise size companies, but, it, you know, the, si- the size of the site can be enterprise regardless when you come in. So I'm talking like number of pages. You might already have crawl budget issues that you need to work through and, you know, challenges getting, I don't know, your XML sitemap to be working correctly um, given your scale and you can work through those. Some of the other really common tactics that I think people are interested in, um, you know, programmatic people are excited about and always want to do. I think that is more challenging, frankly, in today's world, especially if AI advancements, getting that um, formula right is harder than ever. Um, it doesn't mean it's impossible, but but it's yeah. there. 
Um, the other common one is obviously just content creation. So whether you're using AI or you're using humans, you know, in-house or a fleet of freelancers, you can just create content and create content and create content. And eventually it grows. And eventually you might be driving a lot of traffic from that. Yeah. Um, one of the other big ones that is near and dear to my heart is UGC. UGC, yeah. I love <laughs> user-generated content. I'm on a soapbox about it kind of all the time, as you know. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a, a great way to grow, um, you yeah. know, and really engage your fan base for your brand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and not have to do all the work yourself. And I, I think it's just such, such an, un, I think people focus on programmatic instead of UGC. Um, but I would also say like, UGC is programmatic. It's just other users are submitting it into the database that you own, right? Yeah. Um, so getting more creative about how do we create and be creative marketers um, to give users real and interesting opportunities to get you UGC that is meaningful to them and not pulling teeth because it's not going to work if they're not excited to submit it. Yeah, and it, exactly what we were talking about, and we'll get into a little bit into the AI side of things, but in the world of AI, UGC is, you know, it's a, it's, it's a differentiator. It's like subject matter expertise. You can't, there's no AI that can give you, you mm -hmm. know, the, the richness of content, like, mm -hmm. like your community, like your employees, like your, yeah. you know, your users. So it's, it's dear to me. All as well. their individual use cases, all the unique things that they care about, yeah. or if it's e commerce, right? Like, what occasion did they wear it to? What was the time of year? Um, mm -hmm. All of this really, really rich data. Like, there is a reason Google is so obsessed with UGC lately. And frankly, UGC was already working yeah. based on that. Look at Canva. Look at yeah, the templates yeah. that users can submit. There's a reason you yeah. find Canva and that they have been an SEO superstar. And one of the pieces of that puzzle is that they've really leveraged UGC. Yeah, exactly. But coming back to kind of programmatic, obviously, mm -hmm. a bit of a bad rep in the SEO yeah. community sometimes. So recently, uh, John Mueller uh, said that it's, it's basically just a, just a nice banner for spam. What would you say about that? I'd say, I think we need, A, a better word for it. Because I, I find the name very confusing. Because if you call something programmatic, like most people in the digital marketing space think of what paid, right? Yeah. And, and it's an entirely dramatically different tactic and, and channel um, or, or way to go about growing your traffic. So I think it's confusing. I also think most of the people that approach it from a programmatic and call it programmatic, um, you know, not to, to start fires here, but are kind of doing it wrong. Um, they're focused on a very SEO lens and they're doing it to grow SEO traffic. Um, and that's the be all and end all. And they probably aren't coordinating with other channels and teams that they work with um, for an org. So they're not leveraging the power of, say, social. They're not really utilizing email. They're not um, making sure that it actually helps the business as a whole. You know, they see it as simply a traffic driving measure and a way to like do that with data. Um, and that means that a lot of, you know, I've, I've seen a few classic mistakes, but one of the ones that is most frustrating is everyone's all, but the long tail. And mm -hmm. they create thousands and thousands of pages, if not hundreds of thousands of pages and more, because they're going for the long tail. Meanwhile, nobody's actually looking for this. And the long tail yeah. is like, maybe one search every three months for this variation. And like, do you really want 100k pages on your site in order to capture, you know, the 10 to 1000 yeah. sessions? And it's, like, what's it's the trade off? Exactly. Not worth the it. impact on technical, for example, yeah. you know, you're, you know, like, even when you look at something simple, like crawl budget, where's the, I mean, where's the yeah. logic in it? Yeah. 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 That's what, and, sorry, Tori, that's one of my questions actually was, you know, what are, what are the risks kind of really with, with, you know, the program programmatic, but also, also what, you know, what are the, the, the kind of the balance in terms of the benefits, but I think that's, that's already really being, being covered in terms of the risks and, you know, the, the, I guess it's the, the the risk of programmatic or it would be good to kind of get your thoughts on what the risks are between, you know, programmatic in combination with like AI content. And I know you touched on this briefly Ooh, that we get, so yeah. it's probably, probably a good point as any to, uh, to actually kind of delve into that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, 
those are the two core problems, right? Like either you're not solving a problem in the first place because you didn't do your keyword research or you just don't believe it. Um, so you're not solving a need and you're creating a bunch of pages for no reason, or you are solving a problem and people are actually looking for this, but your implementation, it, it, you know, leaves a little something to be desired. And these pages aren't actually unique. And I feel like this often comes from kind of the startup founder who's just obsessed with like scale. I've got to show the growth. I've got to be, you know, they want that hockey stick. They need to show their investors that something is working and they're, they want the easiest way to get there and they're not willing to do the work. Um, and you've got to do the work, especially today. Like I think five years ago, you could get away with not doing the work and you could use a precursor to chat GBT or, you know, what they do ultimately do is probably write a paragraph and then use like dynamic fields to switch out the words. So it's mm, like yeah. localized by city and town yeah, yeah, or, yeah. you know, whatever your keyword variations are there. Um, but ultimately it's the same thing and you change three words. And it's a yeah. paragraph of content and it's not yeah. meaningful and it's not differentiated. And I'd say they often like just aren't a great user experience, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'd say there are teams doing this well, right? Canva is doing this well. If we look at, um, I used to use the Airbnb example, because if you remember that whole SEO moat thing with Airbnb, mm -hmm. interestingly, I'm seeing like Verbo winning a lot more these days, yeah. but <laughs> they have inventory they have local listings in local places. And what do they do? They create these pages around cities. So you can go find a listing in this city. And how do they make those pages compelling? How do they bring out the different sections? How can they speak to the neighborhoods people are staying in? How can they help differentiate between the different features that people might be looking for in the places that they're staying? Um, so, you know, if you think about it, it's user inventory. It is UGC. Um, yeah. They're creating these listings. They're giving their people that are, you know, putting these houses up, the opportunity to fill in the right fields. So it's the tech, it's um, the branding, it's working with people to understand what might they fill in. How do we incentivize people to fill more information? in? How do we really make this page as curated and insightful and actually meet the user need as possible? Um, so I feel like when you can get programmatic to work is almost when you're not calling it programmatic. <laughs> <laughs> when, it when, when, you're, when you're solving a real need yeah when it's kind of has these other elements that make it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, this... these, it's these core values though isn't it i think that's the the, the, the truth of it is that these core values yeah. don't go away and these core values don't kind of you know that they, they, they you know we we they adapt and they change with obviously technology but there are core values there that kind of stay the same and, and realistically i think it is about obviously creating content that is actually help, helpful and, and it's you yeah. know, it's good for users and you know whether it is user generated content or whether it's you know if it is AI assisted but actually it's it's content that actually helps and I don't think it necessarily matters if that is like a hundred percent you know original or a hundred percent you know whether it's assisted by AI if it's if the content is helpful and it's good for the audience then yep, that's the you know it's that that's the key right and it's that's the same yeah. fundamental kind of these core values that I think, you know, still, still remain true, like even in this, uh, even in this AI particularly, age. Entering, I would so. say that it particularly remains true in this AI mm -hmm. age, because yeah. it does, you know, especially with all the updates happening right yeah. now. Uh, yeah. We know, we know that that's a challenge and, and certainly how we define what is helpful in the internet is actively changing right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. Yeah. Too many of us have been chasing the same what, what's the right analogy? Dragon? That's the wrong one. Um, we're, we're all going after the same thing um, yeah. and using the same tools and yeah, solving in the yeah. same way instead of pulling back and talking to our users and talking to our sales teams and, and our customer service teams and really understanding. Yeah, exactly. Kind of coming back to people. And that was my second question is kind of we all know what doesn't mm -hmm. work, but mm -hmm. how do you actually find like proper opportunities to scale mm -hmm. your SEO, how how can you do it differently, basically? Um, I think if you approach it as an like as an SEO, I think it's best when it almost comes from the executive team um, when it is core to the business. Like, does the executive team or the SEO team see it as a way to grow, or is it part and parcel of what you do, and is it really tied to servicing your community? Um, and one of those two things, like either it's 
your core product like it is for Verbo. Um, and it's how you are actually running your business or it's core to the community and it helps in support of that. So an example there is I worked at um, Craftsy, which was an online education platform based out of Denver when I lived there. Um, and we did online paid education videos um, for often crafters. So did you want to cake decorate? Did you want to knit? Um, did you woodwork? What not? Um, so people would pay to get better at their craft and their thing that they loved. And one of the things that we had um, that was programmatic in UGC, um, you know, we had both patterns and we had projects. Mm -hmm. So patterns, if you're a knitter, right, it's the architecture, it's the blueprint, it's literally how you go about making that thing, all the steps and all the right knots in the right places so you can make it. So we allowed users to upload that. And we did a lot of thinking around how to make that programmatic work. What are the right fields that we can offer to users? Um, what is their incentive to send it to us and to yeah. upload it on our site? We didn't take a cut. We wanted the email signups. That's what we yeah, cared about. Yeah. And we wanted exactly. to serve the users that were already taking knitting classes with a bunch of great patterns, right? Yeah. Uh, we also had... Um, as I said, projects. So that's part of like the celebration of I made this thing and I'm excited about it. And I tried something new and it turned out great and I want to show it off. Right. Yeah. So we allowed people to showcase the success of their work um, and share why they loved that and what new thing they tried. Like, and again, it's the tech, it's the right fields, it's the user incentive. Um, it was also really well tied into our email program and our social media. So we could showcase these things. We could celebrate yeah. them. We could say community member X really did an amazing job with their first time working on this fair isle knit sweater. Um, whatever it is, it, it wasn't the core of what we sold, but it was really well tied into our community and helped them um, in their life cycle in of of being in enjoying what they love yeah exactly and and this is it and it happens you know you said about canva figma is another really good example of of kind of how that works but it's mm -hmm. it's quite what strikes me that it, it, it's quite brave and not everybody is that brave really with ugc mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. um, the way that they do their pricing, how the commercialization model, you know, like yeah. everybody wants to charge everybody, every single user for everything. And, yeah. and you kind of, then you miss the opportunity to get the base with, with some free stuff like the templates. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's, it's very mm. interesting. It's really, I, so, I mean, I love, love that stuff so i guess it's also like the brave the, the brave the bravery is and the courage to kind of you know to to showcase also challenges and problems of things as well and like be honest and have like an open conversation about how people have mm -hmm. struggled to create something because often i think everyone you know and a lot of the times is that there's this everything has to be perfect right or everything has to mm. be you know it like when it's showing off know, for social media yeah it's, it's like everything perfect. has to be per perfect has to be pristine there's no problems at all with the demo there's no problems at all with this product whereas actually in truth everybody's going to have their own learning journey with using any new tool or anything that they're they're experiencing Absolutely. it's all going to and i think that honesty and that kind of transparency especially like you know as obviously as as we go down that kind of that route of you know uh trustworthiness and and, and whatever else but that you know it 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 kind of comes across a lot better when you kind of showcase these stories where people have overcome challenges even if it puts mm -hmm. your product in in a light where you know maybe the people have struggled to get used to it but actually you're honest and you're open enough to actually say well look but they overcame those challenges and mm -hmm. this is how we're also listening to our audience to show how we're going to improve, you know, and it creates that much better dialogue between, you know, the business and the, the consumer, the customer, or even the community that's currently using it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, to that point too, you know, I think how, what we think of as UGC is so limited and that means we're not brainstorming, thinking of the, all the options. So as you think about that conversation, Reddit is UGC. It is. Facebook is UGC. Instagram is UGC. Every single social media platform yeah. is UGC. Third-party yeah. marketplaces like Etsy and Amazon, UGC. when they aren't selling their own stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They're UGC. So yeah, yeah, these yeah. are all things where users are participating. And if you can build the tooling to help them do that, 
you know, yeah. but I think Reddit is a great example of that. Like there are conversations, people are being authentic, but it doesn't mean you're not going to have issues with people being bad actors and doing spam. Like those are still challenges you're going to work to overcome, but I mean, it's working out for Reddit these days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and kind of thinking about, so I'm, I'm mindful of time, but I wanted to come back to what we were saying around dealing with actual scale. So mm -hmm. how do you, how do you deal with scale? Because it, it's all well and great. Everybody wants to scale. Everybody wants to grow. But how do you deal with it? Yep. To me, there's kind of two key pieces here. You really need to get your tech in place. You need your, your platform to work really well. So you need to think through indexation. And you're going to need to really um, solve the problems of not everyone's going to submit a ton of data. So if you're selecting and allowing people to upload video or um, images, right, they might not submit text to. And the quality of the UGC will vary based on the users. So we spent a lot of time thinking about um, how to get that automation right. So yeah. adding the right fields, you know, thinking through character counts, thinking through uh, minimum character count submissions, yeah. um, whether it's for submitting that UGC or it's for indexing that UGC. Just because mm -hmm. it's submitted doesn't mean you need to index it. Yeah. Um, so really getting the platform to work well in that way and set up the automations so things flow. You're also going to want to do things like automatically get... I don't know, like permissions to share that thing because you might use yeah. that for marketing purposes. So when they submit it, they have to agree to the terms and conditions that you're allowed to use it in the way that you want to be able to use it. And they have to agree to that. And um, the other big piece to me is, okay, let's figure out most use cases at scale and tech. I also want as an SEO, the ability to kind of override things for special use cases. Um, so can I set... Um, say, meta descriptions globally based on a pattern of, I don't know, the long description and, and, you know, truncate the character count automatically, right? But I can I also go into specific ones and add a custom one and override it when it's worth it because this one is really meaningful and is performing really well for us and we want to showcase it to our best advantage. Um, or when we think of that, like, quality problem, quality is defined in more than one way. So just submitting yeah. an image with not a ton of text, you might think of as not great quality, but what if they're a really well-known person and people really love them and look at their projects and maybe they're getting a bunch of links. So maybe we automatically de-index this because it doesn't have enough content associated with it, but then we're missing out on the links. So I want to be able to mm -hmm. override when and where I want to, but you know, I want to solve I want to 80-20 the initial kind of solution of the tech and then also be able to, you know, fine tooth comb little little details yeah. to improve things. Cherry, cherry pick if you need to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is it. And this is where it's kind of, that's the point, scaling mm -hmm. without losing that kind of ability to also, yeah. cast, not just pressing a button and off you go yeah. <laughs> because yeah. that never works. That's because it. you might, if you, if you're lucky, you're going to have to deal with crawl budget, right? If you suddenly are successful and you have a hundred thousand and 500,000 pieces of UGC submitted, content quality is going to be an issue and crawl budget can be an issue. So you're going to need to think of those as a part of the guts of like your software. So this is where product skills come in handy, frankly, or engineering skills. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Sean, do you have any yeah, other questions that, on your yeah, list? Measuring success, I guess, is probably the way. How, how, how do you, yeah. you know, what kind of top tips really for measuring success and adapting, you know, uh, as you kind of scale? Um, so there's lots of different ways. Um, uh, I would measure the obvious SEO things, right? Like I care about we got this much more brand awareness. Um, we are showing up for these key rankings. I want to also know when people signed up. Um, so are we driving like community engagement? What is the engagement on these posts? So on projects, 
um, we enable people and their friends to comment on it. So we can all mm. like laugh at the hilarious way this went wrong for you yeah. and learn yeah. from it with you. Or we can celebrate how amazing this turned out as your first time trying this new thing. Mm. Um, so yes, SEO, the obvious things um, we already stayed, stated. I also want to think bigger picture about, you know, business value as well mm -hmm. as like other channel value. Um, business value can be obviously tied to like, did you get signups? Are those signups then ultimately turning into like paying customers for your site? Um, what's their lifetime value? Are they more or less valuable than other sources or, or things you can think through? Um, you know, I think there can be opportunities. So because we at Craftsy had such great um, community engagement again, um, that meant people knew who we were. We were a beloved yeah. brand. And that meant we had power to go have conversations for, for sales and partnerships. So mm -hmm. we, if you like cooking, King Arthur Flour is a flour brand of beloved, you know, bakers and um, um, cake makers and such. So we got to work with them. We got to get, you know, those little crochet, little cute little creatures. Oh, yeah. um, we got to work with Disney. So there's we, so many, because you're engaged with your community, because, you're yeah, tied exactly. with this. This means Disney's suddenly interested in talking to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that is not a metric or a KPI per se, but it's an underappreciated version. Um, don't, don't forget links too. So think of Canva and think of people that submit UGC and are like, holy crap, uh, my template is up on Canva and I want to shout about it. So now yeah. there's links to all of these things. And that's a, a really key piece. You're also creating content to share on social, to engage with your community. So like, how are you supporting them? How are they getting success? And just think of the full ecosystem is, is kind of my big takeaway there. Yeah. And don't get caught up with everything, you know, not everything of value um, can be measured, you know, and mm -hmm. not you know not everything that can be measured is a value at the same time Nailed you it. know it's kind yeah. of like yeah, yeah no it's good advice good advice story thank you of course uh right so are we going to go on to one of our seos getting coffee specials which is our room for a four <laughs> now we explain to you what what it means basically is uh, it's Putting something behind a closed door, never to be seen again, something that uh, really kind of ticked us off this week or this month or whatever it may be. And Tori, you get to put something in our 404 room. There's quite a lot of things in there. Let's see if you'll be like actually joining something that's already in there and we can let you know. Yeah. Okay. Or is it going to be a, a new guest? No. I doubt forward. it'll be new, but my answer here will be SG. <laughs> um, this is fundamentally from a place of like laziness on my part. Like laziness is the wrong word. I am just tired. There has been so much change in our industry in the last year. And with all the AI things, it's... I think it's going to be a big deal. I think it's going to mm. mean, frankly, a lot of opportunity um, and a lot of transitionary pain for a lot yeah. of brands as we suddenly can't drive traffic for a lot of top level 101 explanatory informational topics. Mm. Um, and what does that do if you're New York Times or a media site who wants to drive traffic because you sell page views and you're losing out yeah. on all of those page views? Um, I mean, it, there, there's incentives for creating content for the internet. So I'm thinking of the travel space, like what travel writers are going to be wanting to submit this information to Google if Google's just going to be doing it for them and not giving them credit and not driving traffic to mm -hmm. the site and not allowing them to monetize their business. Um, and so I think it's going to be a painful transition. And um, again, there's opportunity with everything, but I'm also just... I just don't want to deal with the fallout is yeah. what it comes down to. Yeah, exactly. I'd kind of like to put uh, uh, put it in there, in, in the room for a four, at least for now, because yeah. I'm kind of, I, I kind of want to know what's going to happen. Because we just the let moment, Google keep it, experimenting with it for a while. Yeah. Just keep, mm -hmm. yeah. keep making it better yeah. before Behind we launch it on the doors. world. 
Yes. Behind closed doors in Let that people room in the beta court. have fun yeah. with it. Like, don't launch it on the world. I don't think we're ready. I don't think content yeah, creators no. are ready. I don't think users are ready. I don't yeah. know how well users oh. are going to respond to it, frankly. Um, I, I keep seeing examples of, uh, you know, all over social media, over Twitter, of, you know, people just pointing out the examples of where it's just, you know, failing and it's, you know, health advice or, you know, anything which is yeah. like, oh, you know, why, why is, you know, why is my dog sick or whatever right? and it's coming up with you know oh you know they may have been smoking or something it's like what <laughs> you know yeah like really bad you know really bad examples and and, and yeah. things that it's cbd fine for it, your you know, kids and like yeah. things that are totally not problematic yeah. 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 yeah and there was a great tweet and point about how it seemed it really feels like and i don't know that this is true but it feels like finding and fixing those issues for Google today is a matter of like Lily Ray finding them or someone pointing to Lily yeah. and Lily saying, yeah, this is a problem. And then responding and saying, oh, you're right. Okay. We'll, we'll send this mm. feedback to the team. Like, why aren't you finding it? These yeah, are obvious. Yeah, exactly. This is, I, didn't you make a big deal about eat for your money, your life sites? Like this is yeah. medical health care. Like what? This yeah. is a big reversal from anything you've done before. Mm. So yeah, no, it's interesting. It really is. Well, let's see how let's see how it pans out. Um, all right. So, Tori, do you do you want to share anything else with our viewers? I mean, uh, I would definitely urge anybody who is listening or viewing this on YouTube um, to check out Tori on LinkedIn and um, the Grey Dot Company as well. Um, because you guys do some amazing work. I'm always looking at your resources as well. You've taught me a lot as well. So thank you. We've been oh, so you. proud to have you have you join us today. I'm excited to be joining you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, we, we do love sharing content. Um, we, we really aim for helping kind of educate um, people, you know, whether they're SEO professionals or they're, you know, founders who, who are interested in these things and really helping them arm them to make good decisions for themselves. Um, really focused on kind of intermediate to advanced levels, which is yeah. where I see, um, you know, I've, all the search volume is for beginner content. So that's what everyone answers. Yeah. And yeah. like, that's exactly. great. We want to solve that problem, but we don't want to not solve the problem for people moving on. So that's, that's where yeah. we focus. Come check us out. Gray dot company. Um, or if you find us on social, it's gray dot co everywhere. Excellent. Thanks well, so much, thank Luke. you so much. And, uh, yeah, closing this episode, it's been a brilliant, brilliant, uh, what 30 minutes of uh, talking to you and, uh, hopefully we can get you on another time and who, whoever is listening, please do subscribe to the channel, uh, and have a cup of with us, um, for the next episode, we'll have another very exciting guest uh, that we're going to be revealing and, um, yeah, hopefully everybody has a great day. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, Tori. Thank you, Tori. Bye. See you later, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.